Well, I've never quite been welcomed with Rotary adjourns at 1 p.m. <laughs> That's pretty big print for somebody to see who needs glasses. <laughs> I'll do my best. <clears throat> anyway, thank you so much for having me. Um, Lieutenant Colonel, what an honor to stand here with you. I don't even deserve to, to be next to you. I'm just a politician. Um, Kent, yeah, you're still lower than me, so it's okay. <laughs> Um, to the bike riders, I look forward to a ride in the Barker Lounger. Uh, maybe we can get a photo, put it on social media, and drive up some donations for you, perhaps. Uh, and to the table right in front of me, keep your hands on table at all times. This is the St. Aloysius crew that promised to give me a hard time the whole time I speak today. It's great to be with you all. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, my staff is extremely uh, pleased. They, I think they've been working on this for, for a year. Uh, the opportunity to provide you all an update as to what's going on in the state of Louisiana uh, with the Secretary of State's office. Um, I am pleased to announce and uh, it's an honor to announce that the legislative auditor came up with a 45 page report to let the Louisiana uh, citizenry know that our elections do in fact have full integrity in all of our processes and procedures. And we did not have the problems that other states had in the 2020 election. <laughs> now that's not to say that we don't have areas that we can improve and we are improving. In fact, I wanna thank you all for having me for lunch today. I was able to escape the legislature unscathed. Um, we, well, I want to tell you what the auditors said, and they praised our state for implementing five key policies, including first, the use of state and national data to ensure the accuracy of our registration databases, the implementation of a curing process to ensure voters have every opportunity to fix their ballots uh, prior to them being counted, um, also, the implementation of various Election Assistance Commission guidelines related to pre-election testing uh, of our voting machines. And fourth, the conducting of post-election verification activities, making certain that we don't have any pockets of problems, and if we do, to investigate what those are and report them to my investigative unit uh, for our, um, full investigations. And fifth, to the investigations of all complaints related to our elections. Um, the auditors did have a few recommendations for us and that we are currently passing legislation in the final stages of the session. One, to compare registration uh, of Louisiana voters with voter list and driver's license in other states, uh, categorize complaints received by the elections unit. When the legislative auditor only comes up with two recommendations, I think we've done really darn well. Um, we will, we've already begun the um, annual performance report um, of all of the complaints that we compile. Um, and for instance, uh, the auditor also suggested that we conduct additional reviews of our documentation related to our pre-election testing and post-election tabulation, which we have already enacted. We, since the 2020 presidential election and since the, the uh, audit, um, we've had, since the 2020 election, we've had already four elections. Uh, since the uh, audit was completed, we've had two. Um, more elections, of which many of you may already know, being in Baton Rouge, um, Baton Rouge a judicial race was um, decided by two votes. We had two other races, one in Alexandria and one in St. Martinville that were decided, uh, excuse me, not Alexandria, Pineville, that were decided by less than five votes. Um, but all three were, went under uh, full recounts, and I'm pleased to report to you that the legislative auditor was not only right, we are a great state in that our elections, these elections were absolutely accurate in our original counts and there were no changes in, in those close races. Uh, I know candidates don't like close races, uh, me in particular, and uh, <laughs> so making certain that these elections are accurate is our most uh, important priority. So where's Louisiana heading from here? Uh, my office has been busy. Uh, last year, there was legislation passed. Uh, Act 480 created the Voting System Commission. That commission has a number of people on it, including myself as chairman, um, and uh, citizens that are involved uh, in it, uh, and legislators of both political part, major political parties. 
Uh, the purpose of the commission is to recommend a type of voting system for Louisiana to replace our aging uh, voting machines. We have 10,000 voting machines that we use on election day, some who have been in existence and in operation since 1995. Um, our latest machines are on um, lease. Uh, those are our um, uh, early voting machines. Uh, there's 88 of those that we use for early voting uh, around the state. And um, <clears throat> so those are up to date, but we didn't purchase them um, because we felt like if we were going into a process of finding new uh, voting system, uh, the more accurate thing to do or the more efficient thing to do would be lease them and not be stuck in a contract uh, long term. Um, you might say, well, why are, we, why are we moving? Not only because of their age, but there's one component of it that we believe and that the legislative auditor has spoken out and I've been speaking out since 2014 as first assistant uh, on um, that we need. And that is we need the voter to be the first auditor of their vote. We need a paper component within our system that allows the voter to verify that their vote is being accurately counted, accurately cast prior to casting that vote. And so whether it's a summary sheet, which some say choose, that tells you the candidates that you're voting for, or it's a full page paper ballot uh, that can either be created by a, um, a um, oh God, I cannot believe it. I would call them DBEs, um, and I'm forgetting the name. It'll come to me. Um, but bottom line is it would, you would punch your, the buttons on your choices. It would print out the ballot. You could verify that ballot. Then you take it over to um, a scanner. That would be the tabulator, which would be a separate operation a separate machine. That uh, tabulator would tabulate the votes as they're scanned in. The paper would remain, the ballots would remain inside the scanner. And there you have two things. You, you had the voter verify their vote before they scanned it and tabulated it. Second, you now have an audit, an auditable piece of paper that every precinct could then be audited. And I think that's an important point that we need to have a important part of a new voting system that Louisiana must have in order to ensure their vote, our voters that their votes are being accurately counted and we can audit and make certain that the equipment is functioning the way that uh, it's supposed to. There's a lot of distrust around the country, um, but there have been many elections around the country since the presidential election. A lot of issues that we're facing um, that we have to deal with, and I will say this, Louisiana should be very proud of our election system. We are in the top of the nation. For once, we're at the top. <laughs> Not top of a bad list, but top of a good list. And two organizations have told us this. The Electoral Integrity Project, which my conservative friends would say, oh, that's a liberal group because it comes out of Harvard. Well, maybe so. They rank us 12th in the nation. We're 12th in the nation because we won't implement things like automatic voter registration, same day voter registration, or all mail balloting. <clears throat> okay, I can accept that. On the right side, you've got the Heritage Foundation that said we are seventh in the nation in election integrity. We haven't reached higher status because we haven't excluded or made illegal uh, the uh, use of private money in our elections because that legislation has been vetoed by the governor once it's moving through the process again and I expect it to be vetoed again. But we need to keep the dialogue going. If elections are gonna be filled with integrity and the confidence of the people of Louisiana, then we have to have not only a secure election system, we have to have a transparent election system. And we have to have a process by which the voters, as I've already said, can verify their vote first and then we can have independent audits of our elections. Then and only then will the people of Louisiana, I believe, fully be, feel that their elections have met the standards that they require. But having said that, Louisiana needs to be proud of where we are on the national um, stage. Along with the VSC, we've had um, experts come and speak to us. Uh, we had uh, a number of folks come and speak to us about the problems that they noticed in other states. And I will say this, just because you saw something on TV or on YouTube or on Facebook or whatever outlet you want to call it, um, or whatever media you listen to or watch, just because it happened in another state doesn't mean it happened in Louisiana. So let's take, for example, the movie 2,000 Mules. How many people have seen that? 
great, let's avoid the movie 2,000 Mules. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you this. I, I, every time that something is put out there, I get emails about. My staff gets emails about. So the, the movie of 2,000 Mules is perpetuating uh, the belief, um, and you can physically see it, but obviously I don't have all the details. But it purports to report that individuals, uh, basically, uh, they call them mules, they collected ballots and they put them in uh, ballot boxes. Louisiana doesn't have ballot boxes, first and foremost, because it's against our law. You can return a ballot in person to the registrar of voters. You can return a ballot for your family members to the registrar of voters, but you're going to have to fill out a form ex uh, telling them what your relation is to it. If it's not a family member, then you can only bring one ballot. Well, why do I bring that up? Because in Louisiana, we passed a law in early 2020, a bipartisan vote overwhelmingly by the legislature and signed into law by the governor. And I am pleased to say, we outlawed ballot trafficking or ballot harvesting from the get-go prior to the presidential election. We do not allow political campaigns. We do not allow political parties. We do not allow 501c3s. We do not allow 501c4s. We do not allow political action committees to collect absentee ballot requests or to collect ballots and then turn them in in bulk. We outlawed that, it was bipartisan, it was an important part of our election integrity efforts going into the 2020 election and going into the COVID, um, whatever we wanna call that. <laughs> so, when we started receiving um, testimony at the Voting System Commission, uh, we received a lot of good testimony. We received very diverse testimony a lot of folks asked me, why are you having these folks come and testify? They called them crazies. Well, we all have our crazies, don't we? You know, in our families, in our businesses, you name it, we all have our crazies. And bottom line is, every side should be represented, represented and every side should have their voice heard. And I was committed to making sure it was a balanced approach. But we also had actual election administrators, the former Secretary of State of Florida, Laura Lee, who just recently resigned, uh, she was a phenomenal Secretary of State, a former judge. She had the demeanor. She was great. She was a fun colleague to work with and get to know. She's now running for con Congress. And uh, that's, that is an important thing to do, resign as election official if you're going to run for office while you're, while you're uh, the state election official. Um, don't want to be accused of counting your votes, only your votes. Um, also had the Idaho Chief Deputy, um, Chad Houck, uh, come and speak. They spoke about um, cybersecurity. And we had an important individual called Professor J. Alex Halderman come and speak to us and present us views about uh, election integrity and about secure uh, elections. He is someone I am leaning on very strongly. Um, he, uh, we're working on projects right now to make sure that um, any concerns that citizens have, that we're addressing those concerns. Uh, and we're answering the questions. But I will tell you, as your Secretary of State, I can only chase so many rabbit holes, and there are so many rabbits out there, the holes are growing every day. Um, but the bottom line is that we're going to be accountable to the people, we continue to be accountable to the people, and we continue to provide strong elections. What else do we do? Well, I'm skipping over the legislation stuff. I don't want y'all to be bored. <clears throat> Aside from elections, we, are now, we just uh, embarked on last February, we embarked on um, remote online notarization. So now, Louisiana statewide, you can access a notary online uh, through a, a process that the notaries apply for through my office. They utilize a certified um, entity that can provide for all of the services that are necessary, but make sure that they are not um, failing our people because a notary in Louisiana can do a whole lot more than any notary in any other state of the union, and that is they can do everything up to representing you in a court of law. They can transfer property, and we know that people can sometimes fib and, and take advantage of senior citizens, et cetera, um, and we don't want that. But So we've gone through a real um, tough process to be able to do that, and we're pleased with it. Um, I'm pl also pleased 
to, um, to report that since 2020, 172,475 new businesses have been filed with my department's commercial division, which means Louisiana is open for business. Uh, despite the COVID pandemic, people have been ready to start their businesses. And I wanna thank the federal government for the PPP. Um, that created a windfall for Louisiana Secretary of State's office. And we were able to get uh, almost all of our businesses that have not been act updated with their active filings on their annual basis. They, it's amazing when they went to the banks, they, the banks said, yep, you're not up to date. Sorry, we can't get your loan processed. <laughs> amazing how quickly they come to the Secretary of State's <laughs> office. So I'm very pleased that we had online service uh, for all of that. And I'm pleased to say to you that my employees were phenomenal. And, and I can't thank them enough for rising to the occasion. During the midst of COVID, we created a process. By, and you may say, well, you know, that's kind of simple. Um, not really, you know, to get a state phone service to go a little advanced, you know, state government, I mean, you know, go a little advanced, transfer their desk phone lines over to their personal phones in their homes while they're taking care of children who weren't in school uh, or family members that needed help. They worked and promoted and basically they kept that operation running. We still had our iChat uh, going. Uh, 24, uh, well not 24 seven, sorry, we don't work 24 seven unless it's an emergency. Um, um, through the business hours of uh, 8 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. to uh, 4.30 p.m. Um, we also passed the Small Business Protection Act in February of 22. It improved state rulemaking for creating procedures. How am I on time? I don't have my, okay. Um, it improves state rulemaking by creating procedures to analyze the availability of more flexible regulatory approaches for small businesses. So what does that mean? Bottom line is before a rule by any agency of the state is put out for public comment, we receive it and any business that has signed up with us for particular um, interest then we will forward that rule to them. They get it early, they can analyze it, and then they can report back to the agency um, that they have to do business with as to what that may do to their own business. Um, what we learned th through the process, um, that was a bill passed by uh, Representative, oh my God, he's gonna kill me. Um, oh my God, this is getting bad. Um, <laughs> It'll come to me. <laughs> He's going to kill me. Um, but bottom line is we found that some of the regulatory environment was actually cutting, shutting down small businesses. Um, or they were creating so much red tape that they couldn't really get off the ground. And as you know, it's very difficult to start a small business, um, especially if you're getting loans or if you're getting grants and you're spending that money and then a state agency comes in and says, no, you have to undo it and do it this way. Well, money doesn't grow on trees as we as we know and so um, we think that's a, a very positive move of course go biz um, was created prior to my becoming secretary of state but as first assistant i worked with tim barfield who was then secretary of uh, the department of revenue uh, and we worked with um, god rest his soul um, kurt Isink, um who was at that time secretary of the department of uh, workforce development uh, the old Department of Labor. We created GoBiz, an online process to um, cut the red tape, to have businesses come to, to be able to answer the questions of all three agencies at one time, and then we formulate that information out to each of the agencies. Um, of course, you have hardly any problems with us because we're not as detailed as revenue or workforce, um, but in essence, what we did was, and it being a complete online process, we saved business owners time and we created the opportunity to not have to focus on government red tape, to, but to focus of getting your business uh, off, off the ground. So, we have something that I think that uh, you're, you all will, that we're about to embark upon, that should um, really hit home for all of us. And, um, especially with the tragedies that we see on an ongoing basis, unfortunately, um, and, and yesterday. But 
Um, this hopefully is a more positive approach to dealing with the situation that is, is out of control at this point in time. Um, there's an estimated 40.3 million victims of human trafficking worldwide. It is a form of modern day slavery. Uh, and I hate to tell you all, but it's happening right here in Louisiana, in Baton Rouge, all across our state. Because I-49, I-10, I-12 are major corridors for trafficking uh, in this country. So what did Louisiana decide to do? My office decided that, you know what? We have hundreds of thousands of businesses all across this state. And we have an opportunity to educate folks about human trafficking and the horrors of human trafficking. But we have an opportunity to not just educate, but to hopefully have folks engage in trying to stop this insidious attack upon humanity. So as a business operating in Louisiana, you can join me in this fight, help protect the most vulnerable members of society and end human trafficking by joining the Louisiana Businesses Against Trafficking. We will be um, announcing this in late summer, uh, launching it. Um, there's no cost to any business that wants to participate. And um, this is basically what it is. All you have to do is demonstrate that one, you've educated yourself and offered materials to your employees about the signs and impact of human trafficking. Two, adopt a zero tolerance, tolerance policy towards human trafficking. And three, participate in a public awareness education campaign within 12 months of submitting your application. That can be as simple as putting information on storefronts if you have them, um, or providing information to your employees if you don't have a storefront. Um, but in return for your participation, you will receive recognition on our website, along with the what we call the LBAT sticker, to proudly display in your businesses. Your participation will also help your businesses stand out from your competitors and build consumer loyalty by taking a stand in the fight against human trafficking. We took a very interesting approach because there's also a tourism approach to, to this. Uh, there are nine museums uh, in my, um, under my uh, authority at this point in time in the Department of State, um, one of which is the uh, Louisiana uh, Old State Capitol. Uh, which my director is here, Mary DeRusso. Wave, Mary, say hi, okay. Uh, and so we decided how could we be unique about this? Because when people are touring Louisiana, um, you know, or if we're touring our own state, how could we be different? How could we stand apart utilizing the LBAT program, but also encouraging more activity in the important parts of our state, like the old governor's mansion, like the, the uh, state, old state capitol, like the Louisiana Shreveport Exhibit Museum, the Cotton Museum up in Lake Providence, et cetera. Um, so we decided to partner with an organization that had already um, been active and participating in this. Um, but what, what was unique about it was it has a tourism aspect and then it has a human trafficking fighting aspect of it. And that is, it provides you an audio of some of the sites that you're seeing in Louisiana. Uh, and what they do is, um, as you're going through spots or if you're driving through Louisiana and some, some things pop up, it'll tell you about them. You might wanna be interested in stopping by. But the important part on the human trafficking part is that there's a button in the app, and this is all an app, that allows you to immediately report what you think may be human trafficking. And when you report it, it goes to the national 1-800 um, number, I believe is how it operates, and they ask you questions. And if they do believe, in fact, you are witnessing human trafficking, they report it to local law enforcement immediately to act. To me, I think that is an amazing way to f combat this. And so here's my blank out again. Nicole, give me the, give me the name again. Quinlan? No, but the uh, Trip, Chat. Trip, Chat. Trip Chat. Trip Chat is who we've tar partnered with. Nicole Quinlan uh, is our partner in this. It's her program. She and um, Allie Landry have embarked on this amazing project. 
Um, and so we look forward to a, a really good process of unrolling this. Um, and we're pleased to have that partnership with TripChat. Um, this is just all a fraction of, of what we're doing. Um, but I was asking um, your president, what are some of the projects that you all embarked upon? And so I know this is small, but I want it, it's impactful and I want you to see how it's impactful. So you all decided to do a sculpture in downtown Baton Rouge at the end of Florida Street, right there at the river, right? So I'm hosting uh, with the help of our friends from Visit Baton Rouge. Um, I'm hosting the National Association of Secretaries of State here. In I bring a cheering squad and I plant them here, there, and yonder. But um, we, uh, we're hosting them in early July, after the 4th of July. Uh, we already have 22 states that are registered coming. Uh, we're excited about that and more will be registering. But I'm gonna be hosting for the secretaries themselves and their spouses a, a private uh, after dinner type um, event. It's gonna be held at a private apartment that is overlooking the Mississippi River. And what do you believe, lo and behold, that sculpture is right in the middle of the view. So thank you for doing that because that promotes Baton Rouge. It shows you what a beautiful place we live in. It's right there on the river. It's a phenomenal view and I can't wait to do it. And then I get to brag about you all for having sponsored that. And so those things do matter. Um, what you do for the community, whether it's ending polio or it's supporting schools, um, supporting young people, um, thank you for it. We can't be a better state or a better city without your efforts. And so I wanna thank you for your time here today. I hope that I've given you uh, enough information to promote our state amongst your friends and family about how well we're doing in elections. Uh, I've already gotten compliments from many of you uh, as I was walking around shaking hands about how we already run our commercial division. I appreciate those compliments. We're always looking for ways to improve. If you have methods for us to improve, please contact us. Um, you can contact me directly at kyle.ardwan at sos.la.gov. Uh, no obscenities, please. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just want you to know I'm proud to be a Louisianian. I've been here all my life, and I'm proud to be your Secretary of State. I'm proud of the people that work for you under me, because that's who they work for, they work for you. And we are committed to doing our very best for you at all times. No other state in the nation pulled off a presidential election like we did after Laura, Delta, Zeta, Cristobal, Marco, no one. <laughs> No one. And Ida was just as bad as all of those combined. But it hit worse. And so when you hear, and I'm sure in your businesses you are hearing it, you're feeling it. If you hear about supply chain issues, they're real. For the election post Ida, the week before the election, we were still trying to obtain trucks to transfer voting equipment to polling locations in, in the affected areas. We had to go as far as Georgia, Georgia, to get trucks. Paper shortage, I just spoke to the Senate Rules Committee. I testified there last week. The paper shortage is real and it affects elections. And so I'm determined that Louisiana won't be a state that it's affected. And we've tried, we've gone out, we've, we had an individual call every single paper mill in North America, not the United States, North America, and we got the paper we needed. We can't move a federal election. We can move a state election. But that's how hard my people work. And that's how hard, that's how good your tax dollars are being paid to these individuals who are making it happen under extreme circumstances. So thank you for the honor of serving as your Secretary of State. Thank you for the honor of being up here. As much of a loser as I feel next to this wonderful gentleman. <laughs> um, I mean, I, what a resume, what a life. Um, and thank you for your service. 
thank you all for what you do for our great state. God bless Louisiana and God bless the great United States of America.